at uh, Stonely. Military affair, and as you can see, everyone's setting up. It's Saturday morning, uh, about half, well, probably about 11 o'clock now. And this is the uh, Saturday morning with David on guard and the uh, display at the uh, entrance here. Pretty good. Yep. <laughs> Can someone else turn it off? I'm just filming Matt getting all this crazy kit on, sorry. Steady now. They go well with the uh, funny uniform. Yeah. You lose those lovely cuffs. Never mind. Yeah, let's do this thing. Get some tea. Get some tea. Get some tea down it. Yeah, go on. Here we go. <laughs> Chin, bottoms up. It's pity it's not a cup and saucer, but never mind. I think that's got to be the pointing with a sword scabbard has to be the most authoritative way of pointing. On top of a pipe and a, with a spanner. He's got to go. Hmm, losing focus here. Well, that's after you, after you, come. So you've got obviously your bare skin, uh, you've got your bare skin up here, tackle. which has just gone out of focus. Yeah, Grenadier Guard tackle at the side there, which is actually a little bit skewed, but never mind. Uh, tunic, which is uh, King George, the, is it George V or just, I can't think what the, what the cipher is. It's here, 36, no? David. 36, all oh, right, okay. So, um, yeah, GR buttons there. Um, Slade Wallace, 1888 yeah. equipment, including the uh, rolled, um, is it blanket and great coat? No, cape, the back? And cape and cape and great coat. Uh, and the guards badge on the back here. Uh, D-shaped mess tins in the carrier there. And this is how the guards paraded before, right up to the beginning of the Second World War, isn't it? Uh, and and they less stuff before. Uh, less stuff just yeah. before. So this is sort of First World War 36. era. 36. Oh, right, okay, yeah. So, oh, there's the bottom, yeah. And the Quillian bayonet, which is quite nice. Probably a bit, bit sort of late to have that, really, isn't it? Yeah. But it's nice to Great have. It, yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, very good. Excellent. As you can see, it's beginning to get busy now. Okay, so that was Stonely. I uh, didn't get a huge amount of footage of the show itself. It was a bit busy for that, really, and also obviously busy shopping. Um, 
got some overviews there and obviously the display in the entrance hall. Just going to run through the bits and pieces I've picked up now in brief. Uh, some of these bits I'll be doing proper videos on at some point in the future, but no particular order. Um, we'll start off with the so bought, uh, seven basic pouches, um, as you do. Uh, pound each, uh, they're in a pound box, but they're all quite nicely uh, stamped, they're quite clearly stamped, uh, Mark II there, the rest are all Mark Threes. These two are a little bit different, they've got um, the early, they're 1944, this one's certainly 1944 dated, this one's a little unclear to see, but they both have the quick release fastening, so they're wartime quick release fastening with steel, um, the steel C-clips on the back, the economy steel, uh, sheridized steel on the back there. Bought a second pattern, a 1944 pattern haversack. A pair of PT shorts, 1967 dated, uh, size 2. A uh, combat cap, which is part of the Korean War cold weather clothing, which uh, came from Alan Pryor. This was a, you know, bought off a friend rather than off a stall. Uh, some of the other bits were as well, but uh, it's very nice. It's a nice addition to the Cold War kit that I needed, the uh, Cold War cold weather kit that I needed. Um, got for Lucy some dress, Women's Royal Army Corps dress badges, uh, which are gold bullion on beach brown and they were worn on the uh, green uh, dress uniform. They're quite nice. They were just again, you know, pound pile sort of thing. A couple of 1972 dated toothbrushes, there were a box of these, never been issued, useful for uh, later war, uh, so post-war uh, wash rolls, uh, hold rolls rather, a uh, 1945 dated, if it will focus on there, get my light on it, there we go, 1945 dated uh, open comb razor, uh, war, um, military issue, a uh, trench lighter which is a f believed to be a fairly modern sort of reproduction one but good for kit layouts. Uh, Good for the first war. More kit layouts. Um, a 50s balaclava, which is part of the cold weather kit. Again, another nice addition to that. Um, one of the more interesting bits. A Mark IV helmet with the riot visor, as used in Northern Ireland. Um, a Mark IV liner in there, not the Mark V. So that's uh, something I've wanted for a while. Vital Cleaning Tin, 1946 dated, the oil bottle's a bit knackered, it needs another oil bottle in the pull through and probably a replacement for that one, but it was cheap enough, so that's good. Uh, dubbing Tin, Dubbing Protective, 2 ounce tin there. An uh, emergency ration tin, which has been uh, repainted gold, uh, obviously the lacquer had all gone, but again it's for display pur purposes, so Looks good enough, it doesn't look too bad, the finish isn't too bad. Uh, bought that up Alan again, off a uh, friend rather than off a stall. Um, a sling, can never have too many slings. Uh, this one is actually quite nice, I've dug it out. It's, I don't know if this will focus on here, get the light on it. There we go, 30, it's either 33 or 38, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but it's enough. Whoopsie daisy, tin of foot powder. Again, you can never have too many tins of foot powder. And a tin of foot and body powder, which is a post war uh, example. So this, is, this is more of a wartime look, the gold, uh, the gold tin. Later on, the made in brown with the green writing. Uh, this is a post war green with black writing on. So. Again, cheap enough, good additions for the small kit layouts. Um, I'm missing one of these. I did buy two, the other one's in the other room bought two of these, which are the post-war hold-all, uh, I keep calling them wash rolls, hold-all. Uh, this is a 50s dated example, I think the date's up here, see there, 1953. Uh, the other one is 78 dated, I think, or 73. Uh, they were produced from the 50s onwards. The previous version was, it's associated with the 44 pattern equipment, uh, has one less pocket in it, but these are good, for, obviously, for doing post-war um, small kit displays. It's missing the tapes, this one, uh, that... It should have tapes that come off at each end here and here, uh, which I will need to replace. The other one has them. And 
another hold all. This one is just display items, but it's set up as a First World War period hold all with a reproduction toothbrush, reproduction uh, modern bone comb, straight razor, so the button stick and everything in there, and a sort of plain wooden uh, brush. Again, that was off Alan. I do have one set up for First War, but again, it's useful to have the extra bits and everything as well. Again from Alan, uh, Mr. Pryor, a soldier small book, which is precursor to the AB64 in some ways. Uh, it was carried in the top right pocket early in the First War and pre-war, so that's a useful thing. It's a reproduction. It's very useful to have. Again, for small kit displays. Uh, we've got uh, here, no, get it the right way up. The writing on the spine is a little bit faded. I don't know if you'll be able to read. That's probably not, it probably won't focus on it. Let's see if we can get this to focus here. Anyway, it's the all arms drill, uh, drill manual, basic drill manual for 1935, uh, which again is a useful thing to have. Uh, I appear to be missing a couple of things from the box that I was going to show, so I'll just pause the video, go and get those, if I can find them, and show you that as well. Uh, bring the other wash, the other hold all through as well. So we've got the other hold all here, which is essentially the same. You can see what I mean now about the ties on each end. The other one I'll need replacing. This is a 70s. A dated example in one of the ends here. Uh, there we go. 1978, as you can see there. Um, so that'll be again, just a useful bit of small kit. Um, another combo pen. This one actually has the cap on and the little sugar pill, which is quite nice. Obviously, there's no. It's a training device. There's no actual uh, medication in it at all. Um, but uh, it's quite useful. It came with a little reset cap as well, which has two get the light shine on this, there you go, two little pins inside so when you fired it, you want to reset it you can see there are two holes each side of the main hole there this slots in, you just press it down on a hard surface and it pushes the if you fire it, which you can see there that comes out, and this allows you to reset it so that's quite a useful little thing to have as well and finally, the biggest item, the bulkiest item I picked up which I won't be able to get fully in <laughs> big lump of DPM uh, is a Parker um, 70s uh, cold weather. Oops, I've got the hold all coming in there too. With the wire hood and the Velcro tabs to the, uh, the cuffs, and it came with the liner, which is good. Uh, the liner attaches the earlier type attached to the Velcro inside. So that's a, another nice pickup as well. And that's basically it. Uh, that was everything. So it was quite a successful trip, really, and I had a good time. It was good fun. And uh, yes, we'll have to see what next year brings at Stonely. But uh, that's the video for now. Until next time, bye for now.